Hi everybody, Jonas Stenstrom here with Untamed Science and Rob Nelson Films and I'm here on the beautiful west coast of Sweden. And we're here to get you started on your new digital SLR camera and specifically we're here to talk about aperture, shutter speed and ISO settings. The reason why we want to do this video is that when we're out filming and taking pictures, we meet a lot of people that have these nice cameras, but they just don't know how to get started taking good pictures. I am camera right now. Maybe you can help me. Sure, sure. Uh, so that's why we want to go through some of the basic settings. I'm going to show you some examples with still images, pictures, but these settings apply just as well if you want to go ahead and shoot video. So I want to start with aperture. When we take a picture, we can adjust the size of the opening where light is coming in to hit the sensor, and that is the aperture. If you set it to a small hole, well, then you're gonna have a lot less light coming in hitting the sensor, of course, as opposed to having a larger hole, that makes sense, right? The aperture, also called f-stop, is the number on your camera that usually goes from somewhere around 2.8, but it could be lower than this, and up to around 22, and sometimes higher. The range varies depending on your lens, but it's usually somewhere around these numbers. What happens is, this, this might not make sense, but the smaller the number, the greater the opening is going to be. So the smaller the number, the more light is going to be able to hit the sensor. This is because the number is actually a fraction. It doesn't say on the camera, but 2.8 actually means 1 over 2.8, and 22 is really 1 over 22. Meaning that 1 over 2.8 is going to be a larger than 1 over 22. You know your math, right? Um, so that's how it works. The reason why this is important to understand and why we have that range is that you can dramatically affect the outcome of your image by changing the aperture. And specifically, you can adjust the depth of field. Depth of field or focal length pretty much means how much of the depth of your image will be in focus. That is how much in front and behind what you focus on will be crisp or blurry. This is an example of a shallow depth of field. The face is in focus but everything in front and behind are blurred out. This is an example of a large depth of field. I use the shallow depth of field a lot when I'm taking close-up photographs and, and also if you look at a lot of the Hollywood movies for example. mode. The next thing I want to bring up is shutter speed. So when you take a picture you are exposing the sensor in the camera to the light in front of the camera but you can actually affect the time that the sensor is exposed and that is called the shutter speed. I want to begin by showing you a few examples of when you would like to have a long exposure and when you would like to have a short exposure. It probably makes sense that you would need a long exposure, that is a long shutter speed, when the light is limited. For example, if you're taking night pictures. But you can also use a longer shutter speed if you want to create special effects like motion blur. Just make sure you have the camera on a tripod so only the things moving becomes blurry. You need short exposures when things move fast, like in sports events, or in our case, wildlife. Just remember that shorter exposures also require more light. And then remember that aperture and shutter speed relate to each other. Uh, imagine this, you are taking a picture with a large depth of field, meaning that you have a, a high aperture number, say 20 for example, like this. Um, that means that you have a really small opening that the light can come through. If you have a small opening that is a high f-stop number, then you may have to give it a longer shutter speed if light is limited where you are. Because if you use a short shutter speed and have a small opening, then your photo might turn out dark, which means it is underexposed. The other extreme is if you want to take a photo with a small depth of field, then you might have to set your shutter speed to a faster shutter speed so you don't overexpose the image. I mean, this obviously applies to all aperture numbers and different shutter speed uh, settings, of course. You just have to find that sweet spot fitting that photo that you want to take. 
If shutter speed is your main priority when taking pictures or shooting video, I suggest shooting in the TV mode on your camera, which is shutter speed priority. Then you will select the shutter speed that you want and the camera will select the best aperture to fit that shutter speed. And that brings me to the last thing I want to talk about, the ISO number. The ISO number is kind of the sensitivity of the sensor. And in cases like this, when it's getting a little bit dark, you might need to bump up the ISO. Uh, for instance, uh, right now we're actually at an ISO of what? 3200, which is pretty high for a normal digital SLR camera. Most uh, first digital SLR cameras that you buy, if you bump it up to 3200, the image will be really grainy. I happen to be lucky enough to have a camera that can handle it so I can shoot in conditions like this. So the ISO kind of makes the sensor more sensitive to the available light. The setback is that as you increase the ISO, your image may start getting more and more grainy. For example, check out this really noisy footage that I shot in a swimming pool when I bumped up the ISO way too much. My simple recommendation is to shoot with an ISO number that is as low as possible with the aperture and shutter speed settings that you have chosen. How high you can go and still keep the image crisp depends on your camera and of course what you feel is acceptable. Sometimes it's of course better to come home with a grainy picture than nothing at all. I hope with this video that you're gonna feel a little bit more confident to play with the settings on your camera and maybe, you know, turn it to the M setting, the manual setting, and play around with the aperture and the shutter speed and the ISO to experiment a little bit. Try and get the images that you want and change them up. That's always a good way to learn. And remember that the settings that we are practicing here, taking pictures, also apply to when you wanna shoot video. Uh, also remember that we have a lot more videos like this on our channel. We're going to shoot tutorials on all sorts of things, so check those out. We also have a uh, how-to filmmaking book that you can buy, links below. And stay tuned for more videos. Oh, for, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe to the channel, that really helps us out. And uh, see you in another video.